Master, tell us, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah and will deceive many. Then many will fall away and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. John. John. Lord. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Welcome all my viewers to this series on the book of Revelation. What I have done is, uh, since the book of Revelation is a very complicated book for many Christians to understand, we, I have tried my best to simplify the book of Revelation and made it possible for whether you're a believer or a non-believer, you're a baby Christian or a mature Christian, to understand the actual concept an idea of it. So we've, we've, we've gone through the book of Revelation in a very chronological way, step by step, and divided it into different time events. And as we go from the first chapter to the final chapter, we're not going to go into depth or detail, but we want the essential spiritual food to take home so that it helps us in growing spiritually. Now, the book of Revelation is, uh, we are not discussing exactly eschatology, we are just going in detail with the book of Revelation. Of, however, the other apocalyptic book like the book of Daniel, book of Ezekiel, book of Zechariah, and the book of Revelation, references and counter-references will be taken from those books for us to have a clear-cut idea on uh, the eschatology, which is a major part of the detailed discussion in the book of Revelation. We know that Jesus revealed to the church, and this was his last message to the church to, through Apostle John. And when he spoke about the events that is to take place in the future, he did mention it to his disciples in the great Olive Discourse, uh, where he, he, he disclosed what is to happen in the end times to his disciples. Also, Paul gives some references to the rapture in Thessalonians and in the book of Corinthians, where he talks about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. Uh, however, the prophet Daniel, who, who, who gave the message to the Gentiles and the prophet Ezekiel, who was the primary uh, bearer of the word to the Jews, talks about and mentions a lot of things that is to happen in the future uh, of the uh, end times uh, in, great de in detail also. Here, but we are going to go through the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation is a book which uh, various uh, Christian preachers or pastors around the world have their own views and ideas, or they have uh, different schools of thoughts as far as uh, the book of Revelation is concerned. And what I have done is I've done a lot of research on this, and I have gathered a lot of information. And what I personally believe that uh, the, the, these doctrines from the book of Revelation, which can be backed up by scripture uh, and which can be, uh, which it's not that by, by personal feeling that this is right, but which can be backed up by scripture because scripture has to be backed up by scripture is most probably what it is telling us about is what I have discussed. So what we're going to do is we know that uh, revelation is hard to understand because of the apocalyptic language uh, used in it. And we, we are just going to find out why uh, did God give us this book of revelation and what is this message that he has uh, uh, through this book of revelation. And then we are going to go through this in the first episode, a roadmap through eschatology. Well, we're going to look uh, how this whole book is divided into three parts, the past, present, that is the church age, 
and the future events that is to take place. In the past, we just uh, it's from Revelation chapter one, which discusses about Jesus revealing Himself to us, but no more as the Lamb that is to be slain, but as the Judge who is coming to judge us. And then we're going to look into the last message of Jesus Christ to the churches, uh, through the seven letters to the churches, and then um, the next event that is to take place that we are right now at the, at the church age, and what is to take place after that is the rapture and so on and so forth. So let's begin, begin by asking the question is why is the book of Revelation important to us and uh, why is it so difficult to understand this book? So we first come into the reason why did God give us this book? Now, you know, when you, uh, we, we know that all the 66 books are important for our spiritual growth. It is the word of God. It is the mind of God. And we receive revelation, rhema from the word of God. But this particular book has a separate blessing to it. Given in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 3, as you read there, blessed is he who reads the book, not just read the book, but those who hear these words of prophecy and keep these things which are written in it for the time is near. So there's a blessing not for you to just simply reading this book is not going to give you a blessing. It is for those who read the book and th those who hear the words of prophecy, those uh, things written in it, they will receive a special blessing. The second thing is that we know, of course, uh, Revelation 19 verses 10 clearly gives us the fact that uh, when the angel revealed it to him, he, he mentions something very important. He says, for the testimony of Jesus, which is in this book of Revelation, which is what this book of Revelation is revealing, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So these are the two main important reasons of why, this God, why God has given us this book and why is it important for us to read it and keep the words uh, that is written in this book. And the other aspect of it is a political perspective. When we look at it in the political perspective of what is happening, at, and during these end times, it is unfolding and coming to pass from the biblical perspective, we are able to see that the end is near. Not only whatever political developments is happening now is moving towards or, or, or is, is getting revealed what is actually uh, being uh, going to reveal in the future after the rapture. And we will look at it in depth later. Let's start from the beginning of uh, this book. The first thing is who is the author of this book? Actually, the author of this book is Jesus Christ. When I say Jesus Christ is the one who reveals the message to an angel who reveals it to John. And uh, we, we know from the revelation that uh, John actually falls at the feet of the angel and the angel says, don't worship me because I'm, I'm just an angel. So, Jesus Christ reveals the message to John and John uh, and John receives the message through an angel. So that's what is happening there. And then you know that uh, John was the pastor at the church of Ephesus. And uh, during just prior to around uh, 95 AD, before the Domitian uh, Roman emperor, uh, was he was sent into exile for his testimony for Jesus Christ. In this island of Patmos, which is in today's modern world uh, Turkey and uh, this particular island of Patmos uh, today today as, as we speak there is 300 and, there are 365 churches in the island of Patmos and here is where John was sent into exile for his testimony for Jesus Christ and here it is where he receives these uh, this revelation of Jesus Christ now here G he, he was a pastor at the church of Ephesus and he had connection with six other churches and he receives the message he receives the message for the six churches including his that is the seven churches letter right there at the island of Patmos through the revelation of Jesus Christ and what is then revealed in the following chapters of uh, revelation chapter 1 which is describing about Jesus who is no more coming as the lamb that is to be slain as I told you there's a descriptive uh, aspect uh, this description of Jesus as the judge and then they, they talk about in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 about the letters to the seven churches and these are literal churches which were present during that time and also a futuristic message to 
all the churches, that is uh, the churches of the future and including the seven different individual, Christian individuals who will have a perspective about Christianity. And it is kind of a warning where, where Jesus is warning them against, Jesus is actually warning them against uh, where he's condemning uh, five of those churches and commending two of those churches. So we look into that. And then what we're going to now look into is what are the different ways that you can study the book of Revelation and what method and approach are we going to adapt when we study the book of Revelation? What is these uh, four different ways that we can interpret it? We're going to look into it now. Let's look into what is uh, this uh, four ways to interpret the book of Revelation. Now we have four different ways that people interpret the book of Revelation. One is the allegorical approach. Uh, and the second is preteristic approach and the historical approach and the futuristic approach. We're going to be following the futuristic approach and uh, the reasons behind why we want to do it, the futuristic approach, I'll just tell you right now. Let's look into what is this allegorical approach. And it's basically a non-literal approach. See, it has come into practice many, many years ago. As you all know, there are four apocalyptic books in the Bible, the Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, and the book of Zechariah. Now, what happens is people, when they read the book of Daniel or Ezekiel, they cannot understand it. Uh, because they, 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 when they approach it literally, they, it doesn't make sense to them because it's a, a highly apocalyptic book. Now, what happens in such a case is they approach it in a like a fairy tale approach where there is a story of how good and evil will play out and uh, how uh, good will uh, prevail over the evil in the end. Uh, the problem with that is uh, that is not the right way to interpret the scriptures because we need to interpret the scriptures in the right manner. Uh, and we interpret scriptures using scriptures. Uh, for it is the word of God, it is the mind of God. And the revelation that we receive from the word of God is uh, a, a, through the interpre interpretation of the Holy Spirit. And we know that the very word of God is the mind of God. And for us to uh, reveal what is in the mind of God is like literally reading his mind. And it has to be done in uh, using the spirit itself, which is uh, which is the word of God. Because it says in the book of John chapter 1 verses 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. And Jesus is that very word. It says very clearly that the word became flesh, came to dwell among us. What is uh, in the mind of God is revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. And so this is why it is very important to have an expository type of teaching of the Bible where scripture is used to interpret scripture and it, it has to be taken uh, in, the, in a literal sense when I say depending on two things, what uh, under what context is things being told and to whom is it being addressed, what is the content of it and always it has a futuristic approach. Whether the story took place in the Old Testament will always have a revelation which eventually points towards the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is the final uh, person who can redeem us from our state of sin. So this is why allegorical approach is not the right way to interpret the scripture, unfortunately, because it is not uh, using the proper expository way of uh, exposing the gospel or uh, getting the revelation from the word of God. The second type of approach is the preteristic approach. Now, what is the problem with the preteristic approach? Is it also applies the same allegorical interpretation, but then it says the book had to be, since it is written by 70 AD, it has already been fulfilled in 70 AD. And uh, they try to say that in 70 AD, the Roman army came into Jerusalem, devastated the city, destroyed the temple and dispersing the Jews. And so, uh, it, it everything was fulfilled in 70 AD. Uh, again, this is wrong. We all know it. And uh, it's very clearly, uh, when we interpret the book of Daniel, Ezekiel, it's very obvious that, no, there is a future uh, which a plan which Jesus has for, for this. And so it doesn't work out the preteristic approach. The third is the historical approach. Now, the problem of the historical approach again is, uh, it's not subdivided into the dispensation of time like past, present and future. They take the whole book of Revelation and they want to play it through the church age. Again, not a right way to approach uh, the 
book of revelation the correct way to approach the book of revelation is the futuristic approach now what is futuristic approach is basically when you look into the book of revelation we know that the first chapter is jesus revealing himself to us that he is now uh, the glorified christ who is now coming back as the prosperous messiah as uh, prophesied by the uh, prophet isaiah to come and rule and reign and establish the kingdom of heaven to be the king of kings to rule over all of us and he's also coming as a judge the very description of jesus christ in the book of revelation chapter 1 and 2 is talking about uh, uh the, jesus himself being glorified uh, and then then the next phase of chapter up to revelation chapter 4 verses 2 is talking about the church age now he's talking about the seven letters to the seven churches which we will be discussing in the next episode uh, and then then from revelation chapter 4 verses 2 at uh, to revelation chapter 22 till the end uh, verses verse 21 is talking about uh, what is going to happen from the rapture until till the white throne judgment up to uh, eternity future new heaven new earth New Jerusalem. It's talking about the whole thing. It's talking about that right there. Uh, so that is the correct way of interpreting the scriptures because when you divide it into the timeline, it unfolds. Uh, it's uh, the revelation unfolds on its own, and it makes it very clear. And we are able to take any event and put it at the right place where you want it to be. So this is why I I believe that the uh, futuristic approach is the right way to interpret the scripture into what is the uh, what is apocalyptic literature and why did jesus use apocalyptic literature to describe the book of revelation and uh, before we actually go into what is apocalyptic literature and all that what are the apocalyptic books it's very important to know the three members of the human family uh, that god created when you look into the first 2000 years of history, that is right from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 12, right? So you start from Adam to Abraham. There was only one member of the human family that was the Gentiles. Okay, From Genesis chapter 12 till Acts chapter 1, there were two members of the uh, human race, that is the Gentiles and the Jews. Then from Acts chapter um i'll say acts chapter 2 is when the birth of the church took place with the holy spirit empowering the body of christ uh, till from acts chapter 2 till revelation chapter 22 we have three groups of the human family that is the gentiles the jews and christians this is important for us to know before we can see uh, uh, we can see about apocalyptic books that was written and the apocalyptic literature. The book of Daniel, uh, that's the first one, one of the apocalyptic books is the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel is a timeline for the Gentiles and it starts from the Babylonian captivity and takes them to the eternity future. The book of Ezekiel is a timeline for the Jews, again starting at the uh, Babylonian captivity and taking them to the eternity future. While the book of uh, Revelation starts from the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and it, it is a timeline, which, which is a timeline for the Christians, and uh, showing them the, uh, the way to the eternity future and what God has set up a plan for them. So that's very important. So you need to know that these are the, uh, the, the books through, through the prophet has been revealed to us. It's the book of Daniel for the Gentiles the book of Ezekiel for the Jews, and the book of Revelation for the Christians. Which are the four uh, apocalyptic books? You have the book of Daniel, Ezekiel, book of Revelation, and the book of Zechariah. Now, uh, for us to know what is exactly apocalyptic literature right now, apocalyptic literature uses symbols to reveal hidden truth to us, right? So that is what is apocalyptic literature. For example, if, if, if the Bible says about seven stars and uh, Jesus holding seven stars, and then it talks about seven 
candle, uh, st uh, seven candle stands where uh, the flame to the candle is, um, uh, is, is Jesus Christ. When he comes and stands in front of the candle stand, uh, the candle uh, receives the light from Jesus. It's talking about, uh, we know that it's very clearly given that the seven candles represent the seven churches. And the seven stars which Jesus holds in his hand represents the seven angels to, to whom Jesus communicates this message to them. So apocalyptic literature literally uh, translates on its own or we would say not rather rather interprets it on its own uh, through symbols and through science. And that's what's apocalyptic literature all about. So now that you've understood apocalyptic literature, we're going to go into the main core of uh, the whole study. And that is we're going to go through the roadmap through eschatology. And uh, I will end it up with the next episode. I'll be talking about the seven letters to the seven churches. Now, in this roadmap through eschatology, very important for you to know that, as I told you before, the book of Revelation is divided into three parts, the past, present and future. Revelation chapter one describes about uh, Revelation chapter one describes about Jesus, the glorified Christ, who is uh, portrayed as the living as, as the judge who's coming to judge the living and the dead and the believers of course he's not going to judge the believers for their sins he's going to judge them for their works uh, we'll discuss we'll discuss about it in depth uh, so he is there now he's coming not as a suffering messiah but as a prosperous messiah to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth and law and uh, and uh, reveal his plan for eternity future there he is described as a, a judge with flaming eyes and he can see everything. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega. There he talks about seven spirits. Now, it's not that the Holy Spirit is seven, has seven, uh, there's seven Holy Spirits. It's talking about the seven spirits uh, or he's a literal, uh, literal person uh, who walked on earth during the 30, uh, 33 years of his, uh, 33 years of his life with the seven spirits working through him. Now, the seven spirits are seven functions of the Holy Spirit. Now, it describes Jesus as a living judge with flaming eyes and uh, talks about uh, the seven spirits that is in him, uh, that is uh, that John can see as a vision of Jesus. He sees that glorified Christ there in that picture. Revelation chapter 2, uh, uh, two and 3 is basically talking about the present church age where the seven letters to the seven churches is talked about and uh, which we are going to discuss uh, in the next episode very important for us at this present age not only talks about seven literal churches do present during that time uh, we know that uh, one of the churches church of Ephesus past uh, the pastor was John and uh, he was a circuit preacher who you who had communication with the rest of the churches he he, he commenced five churches Sorry, uh, I'm sorry. He condemns five churches and commends two churches and says appreciates their work and he has seen their works and uh, they will receive their rewards for it. But five other churches out of the seven churches, uh, he has a warning for them. And uh, he uh, and it's not just churches. He's also talking about seven different Christian individuals who have a particular attitude towards their faith. Uh, and it really addresses uh, the, not just the seven churches or groups of fellowship, but also addresses actually seven different individuals as Christians. And then Revelation chapter 4, verse 2, to be precise, he talks about the rapture. Now, what is rapture? Rapture is the uh, taking away of the uh, church, the body of Christ, the believers, before the wrath of God falls upon the people on earth. Now, that is uh, starting right there at Revelation chapter 4. And then uh, the, the tribulation period begins. And the tribulation period is for a period of seven years. Now, this particular period, which I'm going to show you right now in, in the form of a chart for you to get it clear cut, is Revelation chapter, of, uh, after the rapture, that is in Revelation chapter 4, we have the seven year pe period of tribulation. Now, there are there is a seven uh, trumpet judgment. There is seven vial judgment there and there is seven seal judgment. So first is the seven seal judgment. Then comes the seven trumpet judgment and seven vial judgment. Now, very important is that the first three and a half years is the seven seal judgment. During this first three and a half years, there are two things happening at one time. Now, in the heaven, 
there is the marriage supper of the lamb happening in the marriage supper of the lamb what is happening is uh, we we are given wedding garments and what is described in revelation chapter 19 or 17 or 19 uh, to be precise is, is talking about the marriage supper of a lamb we are given wedding garments and we are given crowns now we'll be talking about the diff five different crowns that we christians will receive we'll talk about it in detail we are given that and there is celebration of the marriage supper of the lamb in the heavenlies while there is on earth there is uh, uh, the wrath of god has begun the first three and a half years of the seven seal judgments has started we have here the four horsemen symbolizing the rise of the antichrist wars and famines taking place financial crisis uh, taking place what is going on at the present world is nothing compared to what's going to happen there um, we're not here to discuss that i'm just taking you through the roadmap now meanwhile in the first three and a half years uh, there, there's another event that will take place in the heavenlies that is there's going to be a battle between michael the archangel and satan and satan is thrown to the earth where he targets the nation of israel all right he targets the nation of israel and um, and the, the, that that and, and then from there on that is at the three and a half years uh, in the midpoint of tribulation is when this abomination of desolation where the antichrist who is the main backdrop character in this years of, in these seven years of tribulation steps over at the temple and tries to uh, take over as the ruler of the world and proclaims himself to be God and demands the people to worship him. We are not here to talk that in this episode. I'm just giving you an outline here. Meanwhile, there's another event that takes place that is the two witnesses. The two witnesses who shall come and there will be 144,000 virgin male Jews who will realize during this point of time, uh, that is at the midpoint of tribulation, that the, they have been deceived by the Antichrist and they have believed somebody to be a messiah uh, who they believed is the messiah and he is actually the Antichrist uh, and is not their messiah and he has come to deceive them and will repent and turn back to God. Now the prophecy is that all Jews have to be saved. Now uh, there is, they talk about this number of 144,000 virgin male Jews these two witnesses preach the gospel to both the Jews and the Gentiles will be there. Some of them who do not take the mark of the beast who come into that picture. Uh, and these two witnesses will be killed, executed, and their bodies will lie down in the, uh, will, will lie at the streets of Jerusalem. And after three and a half days, they shall miraculously resurrect and uh, be taken up uh, to heaven. Uh, this is the whole event that takes place and in the next three and a half years is the trumpet judgment and the wild judgment uh, we will see what happens there and the end of uh, towards the end of the seven year tribulation is when the second advent of Jesus Christ when he shall now put his foot uh, uh, put his foot on Mount Olives and fight that great battle of Armageddon where he shall defeat the Antichrist and the false prophet and throw them into the lake of fire and Satan shall be bound in the uh, uh, in the pit for a thousand years and in the thousand years Jesus shall establish his kingdom of heaven that he promised and Jerusalem shall be the capital of the world and he shall rule for a thousand years. After the thousand year period is over, Satan shall be set free and there shall be a final battle which will just be with the, with the shout of his word he shall defeat the satan for, for, for once and for all and put him through uh, and throw him into the lake of fire and then shall be the great white throne judgment and th here he shall judge both the uh, all the people who never believed in jesus christ as being the redeemer of the human race and uh, then it is uh, eternity future from there and uh, there's new heaven, new earth, and the city of Zion, uh, New Jerusalem. Uh, and that is, uh, that towards the end is, that is the end of the book of Revelation. Now, I just, just skimmed through it quickly, but now I'm going to show it to you in the charts and how it is divided for you to have a clearer understanding of the whole picture. So now you can see here in this chart where we're seeing 
the book of Revelation chapter 1 talking about the vision of John, Revelation chapter 2 and 3 talking about the church age, the seven letters to the seven churches. And then uh, chapter 4 is uh, John is taken up to God's throne. The, it is the rapture. Revelation chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 to be precise. And uh, supporting verse in the scripture of Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 to 17. Now here comes the seven year tribulation period. Now seven year tribulation period starting from Revelation chapter 5. Uh, we have uh, the uh, from 5 chapter uh, verse 12 onwards. Uh, we have the seven seal judgment and then we have the seven trumpet judgment and the seven vial judgment. Meanwhile, uh, in the seven, seven years of uh, tribulation is again uh, divided into, into two parts. One is the three and a half years uh, judgment. I mean, three and a half years of wrath. In that first three and a half years is the seven seal judgment. And uh, the next three and a half years is the seven trumpet and seven vial judgment. Now, it is during the first three and a half years that we have the two witnesses and the sealing of the 144,000 male virgin Jews. Uh, meanwhile, the two witnesses will be killed in midway between in, in, during the tribulation period and they shall resurrect after three and a half days, which I already spoke to you about. Now, in the in, meanwhile, in the midway of the tribulation, there shall be fight in the heavenlies between Michael the archangel, which is the good army, I would say, of God, angel of God, and Satan, and the fallen angels, and Satan shall be thrown onto earth, and during that time is when he, uh, when, when the angels shall attack, uh, the Satan shall attack the nation of Israel. Now, during the last three and a half years is the seven trumpet and seven file judgment, where the kings will be coming from the east and joining the Antichrist to fight the battle of Armageddon. That's where it takes place, the Battle of Armageddon, where the uh, kings from the east and there will be a drying of the river Euphrates. They shall come directly and team up and fight the battle uh, by, by, by joining Antichrist to fight the Battle of Armageddon. And Revelation chapter 19 is where the uh, uh, Jesus shall come back in white horse uh, along with the saints who were taken up in the, during the rapture and he will step back in the Mount Olives and the, the, and defeat the Antichrist and the false prophet and throw them in the lake of fire. And that is where uh, Satan gets bound in the bottomless pit. Those who know Christ during this period of millennial period, which is the important period of millennium, they shall, um, they shall reign with Christ for that thousand year period of time. And uh, during this uh, millennial period, uh, at the end of this thousand year period, he will be loosened for a season again, where he will again rebel. Uh, he will again gather an army against God and rebel against God. And Jesus shall defeat Satan and throw him into the lake of fire once and for all. And, um, and those who had a covenant with him will, have, uh, will also be thrown along with Satan into the lake of fire, where the Antichrist and the false prophetess, and this is the second death. And following which is the, in chapter 20 to be precise, is the great white throne judgment, uh, where uh, the, uh, the, the believers, those who are not believers in Christ will be judged. And then onwards, 21 and 22 talks about new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. Now, you know, it's interesting, uh, that, is the, that is the whole revelation I've just taken you through the roadmap through eschatology. Now we're going to look into uh, uh, some more uh, things before we end this episode. As we'll be talking about what are Christians going to experience at the rapture of the church, what will happen in the heavenlies and what will happen on earth during this time, followed by the rewards that the believers will uh, receive. And then I want to finish it off with talking about just introducing you to what is the satanic uh, what is a satanic trinity uh, to be precise uh, of the antichrist false prophet and the dragon himself uh, before that um, i just want to uh, just end this episode right here uh, talking about a roadmap to eschatology and i would like to introduce you to these concepts in the next episode where we'll also discuss about the definitely the seven letters to the seven churches. And before we discuss that, we just talk about the rewards that 
the believers receive in heaven the crown the five crowns that they will receive and uh, talk I'll introduce you to the satanic trinity and uh, we will definitely talk about uh, and introduce you and talk in detail about the seven letters to the seven churches thank you for watching this episode and don't miss the second episode where we talk in detail about the seven letters to the seven churches and uh, I introduce you to the satanic trinity and the uh, rewards that the believers receive in heaven after the Bema assessment of their works. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers. And um, I, I take this opportunity to say that those who have not yet accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life, this is an opportunity for you to know him and to accept him into your life. As we, uh, as we study more of the book of Revelation, the things that is to happen, if we are not caught up in the rapture, things are going to get very difficult for us to accept and uh, the wrath of God shall fall upon the earth and it's going to be really difficult for us. And before it is too late, let us prepare for his coming, for his rapture and uh, uh, watch out and uh, be careful as, 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 as days progress, things will get difficult for you to stand strong in your faith. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity for you to do so. Thank you and see you in the next episode.